the stuff I want to tell you. And what these guys do, they got tons of stuff to tell you. I think John did a disservice to himself and Lynn did. It gets, they try to pigeonhole it in 15 minutes. You know, what they do and how they can do it and what we've done. I'll be happy to share any of the information that I have about successful personal email campaigns from the databases of our hotels. Uh, affiliate ads where I put banners on websites and what kind of traffic do I get? What kind of click-throughs do I get? Uh, from paper clicks, from geo-targeting to anything else. What I wanted to make sure you understood clearly for today and tomorrow, find me, grab me anywhere you want, grab any of them when they're here, and say, hey, I have a question about. Because one of the things I asked and prom made them promise me to do was that they're a resource for the entire conference. Because I hate going to conferences where you listen about how great somebody was, but they don't tell you exactly how, and then you go back and it's like, what did I get? I, okay, somebody did really good, and I don't know what they did. I want to be able to tell you what we did because I do believe it's not competition. It's a healthy environment for us to get better at what we do within the travel industry. Two things. One, um, there's surveys, I guess. I just saw them. The, but if you can fill those out, tell them how weird sounding I am and how great they are, whatever. Just make sure you fill them out because they need the feedback. Because I want to make sure that in the next sessions next year, that we make that we put the content, the questions to be answered. That little touchstone I did at the very beginning, that was from last year. I hope, you know, from everybody that asked me to get it downloaded and stuff, I hope you did some of that stuff. But that's ongoing, okay? And what they offer today in the presentations and stuff, make sure you bring your business cards up. Two things. Uh, one, I don't know if everybody was here when we first started. I have flash drives, kind of like a little marketing one on one thing. And for all those who don't know about this, uh, this is a QA and a time. I need questions that we can answer now, and then whoever has the best question, I'll let them decide who gets a flash drive. And then if you want to try to win the other flash drive, throw a card up here. We'll draw it before everybody leaves the room, and whoever I draw, they win the other flash drive. Okay, so questions. What do you have for us? Yes? I have a question. In your opinion, what should or uh, how should the homepage of a hotel's website look like? I mean, you have to have your um, images, uh, flash animations, uh, advertising banners, uh, the option to book from each page, subscribe to newsletter, keywords, what else? I'll make a quick comment and I'll open it for everyone else to make their comments. To me, there was a time where the website had to be all things to all people. And as I showed you in that one thing, you can't address group issues when you're trying to sell tra transient leisure. So your, your main page of your website has to be as clean as possible, as simple as possible, but as helpful as possible. It gives the intuitive ability for, if I do just happen to come across your index page, which is your main page, I know where to go next. That's the fundamental purpose of your index page. All these geo landing pages and everything else, those are specific pages for specific campaigns. You can get in much more depth related to whatever brought them there than you can from your index. Your index should not be everything. It should be as clean and simple and helpful. Anyway, anyone else? I was going to add, I mean, obviously prominent uh, booking functionality, and I think that should be on every page, preferably near the top left, because that's where people are looking. There's a lot of surveys that show that. Additionally, I think there should be a best rate guarantee link right underneath everywhere you got the booking, because you really want to convey to them, we've got the best rate, you don't want to go to an OTA, you want to establish more of a direct communication with that, with that customer. And then I would also recommend really having something to entice that person to sign up for your own in-house email database. Uh, preferably, just to, it has to be something uh, worth value to them and easy to understand because you could spend a lot of time and energy and money um, trying to market to people. And what we've seen is the most success that we've had uh, from just a sheer ROI standpoint, even exceeding search, which is surprising. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of old fashioned, but, but email. You know, but, but people don't have, some people don't have the necessary resources in house to properly build that database and then segment the database. But like I've signed up for many, or I subscribed for many newsletters from hotels and never got them. I yeah. Mean, how reliable are you? Yeah. <laughs> it's a pain. You know, well, let's put it up there, but then you don't do anything with it. I've done it. I mean, I actually, our corporate franchise website, I was getting emails all the time, and I said, oh, I'm going to get that newsletter out. I get it out a year later and, like, unsubscribe. It's like, it's passe. Nobody wanted the information anymore. We were too late. Yeah. And one other thing I did have in the presentation, I breezed through it just for the sake of time, is that, you know, I did have a slide on email, and, and one of the things above and beyond building your list is it's got to be integrated with your PMS to automate a lot of, of what you're doing to communicate with uh, your guests that's not very labor intensive. We'll have a vendor tomorrow, actually, from Z Direct, which is one of the slides you have we didn't talk about, that's talking about your database creativity and interfacing with your POS and PMS systems. And if any of these acronyms are not hitting right, if you're like, what is it? Raise the hand and say, what is that? So, any other comments about it?
Okay, any other questions? Yes? Yeah. Um, first one I will just kind of share with you. I met an interesting guy a couple of years ago and met him several more times. His name is Malcolm Gladwell. He wrote a book called Blank. If you get a chance, please get it and read it. The basic premise is this human beings make a first impression within a few seconds, and once they make one, damn hard to shake. Yeah. So, in terms of how you design your website or your video or whatever, think about that. A real question. Uh, we talked about YouTube as being what I term a new gen in general. So user generated content. You don't know where it's coming from. It could be commercial, it could be just someone who's a home video. How do you guys want to address that in terms of it's part of e marketing in the sense that it could work for you or it could work against you? We talked about yesterday in the HSMA roundtable a uh, mob mentality when it comes to user generation. They can be brutal. So do you guys have any thoughts on how user generated content could be a helpful or hurtful factor in your e-marketing. Yeah, actually, if I would put one quick comment, I said, treat it like blogs. And, and this goes to the PR function we didn't talk about, PR and guest communications. You can do this. You can say blogs are for purists. They're supposed to be open discussion, uh, content generated or consumer generated, which is also a section tomorrow on about consumer generated windows. Um, you can let it run its own course. PR is just that, public relations. At least get your voice out. What we did with uh, YouTube as an example, we garnered anybody that referred to our resorts on their YouTubes, pulled them over to our site and say, look what people are saying about us. Because people actually saw that as testament. It's like, yeah, we're at the such and such resort, and oh, it is over there. They saw it was not generated from us, so therefore there was an unbiasedness of that. that it was a terrible video. Most of them are. But the idea was, rather than ignoring them or fighting them or trying to act like them, we embraced them and brought them over and said, this is yet still more of us. My opinion, good question, Chris. My opinion, it's a very slippery slope. It's like TripAdvisor. You love it, you hate it. And they give some candid reviews, whether it's true or not is irrelevant, but people tend to believe what others have said before they'll believe a professional or the marketing uh, text from a hotel. So if I go on to a travel site that has videos and you know somebody's showing me a room that's got uh, filth and cockroaches and stuff, I'm going to believe that. Now, whether it's true or not, is it really maybe somebody's pissed off? So it's, it's, it's a good and a bad thing. I think it provides sort of a checks and balance, which is why I say it's a slippery slope. I think that it has its, its time, if you will. Well, for that matter, if you'd have told me two years ago to invest in YouTube, I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> it two people, free videos, upload them, uh, see them for free. Where's the money? Uh, ultimately, I think it's going to start happening, you know, because inevitably people are going to shoot videos of their vacations and put them online, and we have the ways to do that. So, uh, how it fleshes out and how it affects the uh, the bottom line will will be will remain to be seen. One more comment. There's a great blogger, Andy Beal, um, Marketing Pilgrim, and he deals with reputation uh, management or monitoring, so he can monitor your brand online, and then he also has some strategies on how you might deal with something that's up there that. Is uh, potentially negative. So if you go to Google Blogs and type in Andy B O B E A L, he's got some great information. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, you know, in general, just someone mentioned TripAdvisor. You don't want to ignore TripAdvisor. I mean, it's out there. People are looking at it, and travelers are consulting it. So just be aware of how your your brand and your resort is positioned on it. I know they have a forum now where you can respond to negative mm -hmm. um, negative things people say. But what about even an idea about just having you know a, a laptop and set up in your lobby? Where if someone says something positive, you can say, "Oh, well, listen, you can actually get you know a free upgrade if you just go right now. We're going to put you on um, TripAdvisor if you can just you know relay your experiences." So really, trying to harness that at your resort is not a bad idea, and just be aware of how you are positioned so that you can respond to something that seems completely out of line to you. One other thing, video has done for us as well is uh, we've did Spanish sites, we've done German sites, we've done a lot of language sites. We get better international traffic for the video content we draw to our site. Because as Henry's quick to point out, a picture's worth a thousand words. They can see the video where the language translations are, are helpful, but they're not a critical component. But the video helps us in that regard. And like I said, related to blogs, that's how we, do, we use the video a lot with that. Is there... I have a question for me. Uh, I want to know what's the criteria that travels to uses when you have three properties in the same area Pretty much with a very good aggressive special, which is exclusive. Um, how do I know that you made a fair decision in declining or promoting my offer? Right. Um, usually, what I do, you know, if I if I'm doing research on an offer and I determine that 
okay, so you're maybe ranked three star in expedient workers travel velocity, so I'm going to go by that. And then I look at what I consider your comp set, and if after the research is done, let's say I go back to you and I say, you know what, I just don't feel like this property that, or this this rate we can really endorse as a top twenty deal. Um, you know, can you provide me with any additional information that I can take back to the editors? You know, sometimes this has happened to me before with in Orlando in, our, in, in Orlando property. Um, we ran a property there that was let's say was at one twenty nine, and everything else that seemed to be in the competitive set was ninety nine. Well, when the producer went back to the property, they were able to say, we're number one in Family Magazine. You know, we are on all these websites. We're ranked um, for the, having the best family experience in Orlando. Um, what you don't know about those other properties, you know, we, you know, for example, in the Caribbean, they're on a different side of the island, which is, I mean, there's a lot of information that the clients can provide to us, which when we hear it can make a lot of sense. Um, so, you know, oftentimes when there's a producer that's going to be researching this, you know, the deal of the editors, we're going back and forth constantly saying, hey, I just spoke to the client. Did you know that their property is different than this property for X, Y, Z? You know, maybe last year you just went, underwent a huge renovation. Um, and the other property hasn't been renovated, you know, in years. All this kind of information can really help um, the editors. And then when we write the top 20 ad, we, we can actually kind of message that as well. Um, this property, you know, this is a great deal for this property because, you know, usually it goes for $100 more or because they just underwent a huge renovation, whatever the case may be, so kind of telling the story. Does that make sense? Yeah. I know we've, due to Henry's clock, have run out of time. However, I make this offer to you, and I don't think anyone of us is trying to run away from this, and we'll use the microphones and we'll continue the conversation as long as anyone's interested. But one question I want to ask is, of the questions that have been asked, who do you think had the most warranted question? So that we can give them a flash drive so I feel good about being honest about the giveaways. The other is, if you do plan on leaving the discussion from this point forward, kind of like an official, it's over, thanks for being here kind of thing, uh, bring your business card up. I do, honestly and sincerely, I have a stack of cards here, and I'm sure all of them have theirs as well. I do reply back to any email question. I've had people ask me really strange things because they figure, you know, sometimes you just don't have resources. You know, like, who do I ask that question to? I am not a vendor, I'm not out to sell anything, so I can give you an unbiased opinion of whether I've tried it or haven't tried it and be happy to get back with you and I think all of them will give an honest, unbiased opinion if you ask them a question as well. So it's technically officially over, but by the same token, if anyone would like to ask another question or who did you decide on who asked the best question? Clevery, Clevery. Oh, we have one more question? Okay, we'll put one more question in the mix and then go from there. Who, who has the question? I'm um, very different. I'm not, I'm not in a hotel, I'm not a destination. I'm a a soft adventure tour company, and we operate um, tour, towards from the Caribbean. We are not, we don't have a hotel, so we don't have hotel rooms. So, for example, it, we have always found it a little difficult to market outside of our already cap, somewhat captured um, guests, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, putting an ad Right. in the New York Times, it's going to be like, you get wasted invested. money, because so far we have not been able to measure how we can capture on that, how what's, what's coming out of that. Um, what would you advise, any of you, advise? Um, you're in a great spot. I mean, honestly, you're in a great spot. First off, speaking from hotels, there's trackability. Speaking from airlines, speaking from everybody you're sending business, there's trackability. How you set up your portal to drive business, has your trackability on it. So you have a method from not only wherever you advertise, how you bring the traffic to you, and who you send the traffic, you can track that every step of the way. You would come to a, a hotel, set up an arrangement with them, as an affiliate, whatever have you, but you have a wonderful ability because I have the restriction of message based on who I am. You have no restriction on your message. You're trying to tell me who I am and who everybody else is too. So you have a larger opportunity to drive business. You don't have to rely on one source. I mean, I'm happy to show you the tracking. I'll, I'll show you where to go, how to find it, where to put it on. Any other comments? No. Actually, just a real quick question. What kind of tour packages do you put together, just an example? Um, um, like day adventures, half day adventures, mm -hmm. horseback riding, bareback in the ocean, the canopy tour, mm -hmm. ATV tours. Right. Well, here's an idea, actually, I mean, relating to Travel Zoo, obviously. Um, but if you partner with a resort property that is already going to run in Top 20, that can be a significant value add. I mean, people that are going to these islands are, you know, what's more wonderful romantic than a, you know, horseback riding on the beach? That can even help a property that might be 
in the case of top 20, where the rates are kind of consistent, you know, they might be $10 less than their competitor, but there's this great value add of this um, sort of tour or package. I mean, that's a great way to, you can actually utilize the travel zoo audience by partnering with people that have resorts. A question real quickly for a couple of people. Uh, does everybody have an online booking component to, if they're a resort destination or what have you, whatever vehicle you say, you have an online vehicle that's not a third party, that's not the Expedia Travelocity, but is either your own or related to your property management system? Does, yeah? Who has those? Okay. Who has no online booking vehicle that basically drive business online, if so, to a phone number or to contact the property or your business directly? Who has just that? So. We at least have everybody in some capacity. <laughs> so you're advertising online, driving business to you, and then you book it. Okay, okay. Um, property management systems, online property management systems, and the flexibility of any one of them, including branded ones. If anybody has any questions about that, they can come to me directly. And or actually, John's worked with some, and I know Henry has too, and I'm sure Lynn's come across some. Uh, I can tell you how to do this value added how to add components into certain booking engines and or how to advertise them and still track them with whom you're selling them with so you can get your fair value from it if you do a value added with the relationship. So who do you think has the question? Oh. There, okay. Well, she gets this one. It's a, oh, yeah. We'll give you this one. Anybody that wants to go over and win the other one, give us your business card. As I said, Part of this is a lure to them if they would like to make additional contact with you. If you don't want them to, just put no on the back of the card. Take any of my cards or their cards if you want to. Uh, and it, of course, if you want the presentation or the video connection and the downloads for it, also give us your business card or use the same one for entry and I'll make sure that I send you an email link to the, to the webpage that will have all of this stuff on it. Is there any other question we may have missed that people want to stay for? If not, we're good to go if everyone's all right with that. Thank you all very, very, very much.